Yeah, the first time I did this kind of idea, I really wanted to be kind of sad. So relaxing, but also super frustrating. I used to say like I had to be the stars had to align for me to like paint something. Mm. Maybe it's like that for film. I told you I've been thinking a lot about objects and how objects all of a sudden become this thing of power. These are from the Congo and they're, I think they're, they're, they have the same meaning as the Sami. They're a power figure uh, used for different rituals and came from Africa to the Caribbean and then Haiti uh, and a little bit in Puerto Rico and Cuba. So really having these objects around has, I think impacted my work because it makes me remember how my work is supposed to feel like or look like. You really are multidisciplinary, like mixed media, sculpture. Falling in the, into the toxicity of things is optional. You don't have to compete, you don't have to paint or write or film thinking that you need to beat this or you need to impress whatever, you know, just, you know, artists spiritual in a way you know even if you're not working with something that has to do with spirituality it's still a connection with yourself you know, whatever your opinion you know, that first interaction with a wall a surface or that first moment of taking a camera out and seeing a landscape or a person you know, all of that is an interaction with something that is greater than we can imagine you know we are we are part of something much bigger regardless of your beliefs you're gonna feel it. Once you start creating and connecting with yourself, you start to understand. Like, I would always say that I would change, I would risk my life to be in another human brain's like brain yeah. for five seconds, just to see what it's like. And your art takes people through you exploring your mind. And it makes so much sense when you talk through how you're decompartmentalizing your inspiration and how objects are helping you evoke your memories. Yeah. It's something that we all do, but we never put it in a way where we can look at it creatively or outside of ourselves. So it's super powerful. I've always cared about the youth and the teacher helped me reach a level, level of understanding that I'm, I'm so grateful today and I wish I, I could be that for other artists. Five, zero. It's the furthest back in this painting that tells me where the back picture is. The furthest back. Middle ground, what's in the middle? The middle. The middle. Yeah. Let, let me find it. This is not oh. human hair, right? Let me give you a um, No. I'm going to have it. Maybe this will be a little. So, can you tell me what you think? Yeah, what I think. Hi, my name is Elizabeth Carrion. I'm a teacher in Puerto Rico. I'm a teacher because I love, it's a cliche, but I love uh, um, how the kids are when they, um, when you see their face, when they learn, and I love that. But also, I come from a family of teachers that is in our blood. <laughs> Community is um, very important. If you live in a good community, you can progress and, and do better things. And for that, for, for me, that's very important. And for that, I try to bring that at school and to create a community, just not coming to, to take classes. Let's do other things that help us to, to feel that you are part of the community. For the student, um, it's different thing. We have the art club with you, but we also have um, sports and theater and that helped the student to integrate to the to the co school community more because they feel it's their school it's not just i'm going to that school it's not it's my school I get this idea that I, I can't take this anymore and that I need to leave. 
And so I get on the computer and I start looking at potential places to go. So I have my fancy apartment in New York. I pack one suitcase. I put three pairs of shoes, five dresses, because I was going to go for three weeks. And I never came back. I like never stopped falling in love with this place. There's some such fluidity to, to it. And like that kind of translated into my art that has fluidity and it's actually called the flower. It's it's a it flows. This whole freedom, free flowing letting things be what it is what they are um and then I, I came upon this technique and it's called a dutch pour and from the very second that i saw it i knew that not only could i figure it out but i was going to be good at it i love the difficulty i love the mystery i love the like living on the edge of like maybe it'll be shit maybe at the end of it all it'll be absolutely nothing worth shit <laughs> You know, I've had some stuff, you know, and you're like, what did I just make? Right? <laughs> and, yeah, and then I would like angrily stuff it into the trash can. And the landlord would be like, that one didn't work out, huh? I'm like, what, what gives that impression? But then there's also, I have this need to rescue things and give it another chance. And sometimes paintings that did not work at first, if you start it over, and you give it a different perspective and you approach it with a different attitude. You can not only salvage it, but make it something awesome. And that it became like this epiphany and sort of a way of, of looking at things like, don't be so quick to throw things away because they could be, you could gain a different perspective and you can approach it differently. You sleep on it, you come back to it, right? And so I think a lot of the work I do are, are the people we throw away, right? We throw away these women and we throw away these kids and we throw away, I'm now working with the pregnant, you know, orphan teenagers and we make them second class citizens. But if you take a different approach and look at it again, they deserve a second chance and they deserve another shot and they deserve for someone to believe in them and they deserve for someone to see them differently and you see them open up and flirt. And that's all I think, it's not about me. We should do a fashion show. Oh, that's actually really great. We, As we, a fundraiser? Yeah, we just came from this awesome space that's a gallery space. Yeah. Please come in. And we are like a, a weird space where we have materials, we give lessons, and we make exhibitions. I don't know anywhere, any other place like this in the world that I recognize where you can have uh, the materials, they give you lessons, and you can exhibit your, your products. All these products in the wall, there are students from here find out that the people who learn with us to make some painting or do some art, they don't have space to exhibit their, their own uh, product, their own art. And we said, okay, we need to provide a space so they can show up, but they do. We start in this small place to show what they do. And then they invite their grandfathers, their uncles, their fathers, and their mothers, and they start showing up what they do. And that was really amazing because the fathers and the grandfathers say, no, 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 I want to have this piece for me. And they buy it. They just buy it just for, for the fun of it, for, to have them. And uh, that's the way we started.
I was born and raised in this house. My grandma moved here like in 1932, something like that. Uh, it was a big hurricane and a plantation where she lived, her father had a farm of tobacco and she could no longer uh, be sustainable. She came over here because this was the last part of the train. I mean, the last station in the old train a hundred years ago. So what part of the island did she move from? She moved from uh, Begawa. Oh, okay. It's in the coast. Call all the people. Ven! Mira! Doncito! So I painted that house and that wall. And we're gonna go to nice mirror that I did. You know, I did this at three in the morning. Wow. So people would not see me. Estamos aquí desde antes de Irma. Antes de Irma. Antes de Irma, Irma con todos los huracanes, hemos sobrevivido. Hemos sobrevivido, hemos pintado cuántas paredes ya. Ya, ahora, como <risa> Lo mejor que ofrece este baño es Javi Sintrón. Guapa, guapa, guapa. <risa> ¡Vecino! <risa> Train 88, it was the one who used to stop right in front of this building. But then again, it's good if the train is still here. Finally create community, buzz, scene, a street where we could close off and a bunch of artists come out, paint together, hang out together, uh, collaborate together, dream together, you know, other creatives come out, bring their food, you know, make a community where we can make some extra bucks off and inspire each other. If I'm completely honest, like, you never know what's going to happen with your life. I could say what I want, but who knows, right? Right now, current shipwreck really, really wants to travel the world, painting large scale murals with my crew of artists and like living off that, having my family, bringing my family with me, teaching my kids how to paint murals, how to do art, how to play music, how to inspire others, how to do all this and uh, keep doing this everywhere I go. Really don't see myself ever giving up on that. You recording.
we decided just to quit because we saved some money and we were ready to take the next step and we just love this you know um, just because uh, for us it's freedom. Mm -hmm.